All right, so uh, we don't see any more attendees coming, so uh, we'll begin. Uh, so thank you all very much for joining uh, this webinar today. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day in Prague. Hopefully it's a beautiful sunny day wherever you are as well. And um, before we'll be moving on to the Easter weekend this year, uh, we prepared this home, of, uh, this, uh, home office. Uh, the topic of uh, the presentation and we'll be trying to answer the question of how to protect the company data. And my name is Petr Schwetz. I'm a channel development manager here with uh, Safety Cut Technologies and uh, I'll be leading the first session. And the second speaker uh, is Stepan Horky. He's uh, a great technical consultant with Safety Cut and he'll be doing uh, the demo after my part and letting you know about some uh, interesting stuff. Now, before we move on to the agenda, I'd like to cover organizational stuff first, which is uh, number one, this webinar will take around uh, one hour, depending on the amount of questions that uh, we're going to receive. In case that you do have any questions, uh, please submit them within the GoToWebinar application and we'll be covering them at the end. Now, this webinar is being recorded and we will provide you with a recording. And, you know, we're always trying to make our webinars as much interactive as possible. And uh, for that reason, we did prepare some polls for you to take vote if you want. And uh, we'll be sharing the results with you as well. So what will be on the agenda? What we'll be talking about in uh, the next hour? Uh, number one, uh, there's the home office campaign that we prepared. And, you know, some of our partners, some of our customers are asking, OK, uh, home office campaign, what is it about? And um, the thing is that, you know, a lot of companies, they currently need advice and help due to the consequences of the new coronavirus. And one of those areas they really need help is security. And security is something that uh, we've been doing in Safety Cast since the company started. It's something that we do daily. And uh, I'll also briefly introduce uh, who exactly are we and uh, what is it that we do. Uh, after this part, uh, we prepared some uh, overview of the new situation and challenges that uh, the home office environment brings. And I'll also be covering some practical recommendations and research we did on this topic. Um, afterwards, uh, Stepan Horky will take the word and he will show you some online demo of Safetyka to show you how to do proper reporting on home office. And afterwards, he'll do, you know, briefly comment on our integration with Office 365 because uh, Office 365 is something that's uh, like an essential part of almost any home office environment. And therefore, we really believe that it's very important to cover it within, uh, within Safety Car. And uh, totally at the end, we will uh, begin with the Q&A Q session. So if you have any questions, please submit them and uh, we'll answer it at the end. So to move on with the first topic, which is the home office and uh, some safety car recommendations that uh, we tried to prepare. Because, you know, as everybody knows right now, there's this worldwide large scale shift to remote work. And, and from our experience, all companies are not really sufficiently prepared for it. Some are better than the others, but when you take an average of it, it's not really great for them. And, you know, in Safety Car, we always try to deliver our DLP to every single company, uh, not just the enterprise, but especially SMB, because we believe that every single company has the rights to have its data protected. And we really wanted to help in this situation as well. So we were thinking about how could we do it, you know, because in the end, we are all in this together and we believe that uh, we need to help each other. And uh, what we came out with was uh, this home office campaign. And um, I think one of the strongest points of it is an ebook with recommendations that is free to download for everybody. And <laughs> this is a great story of how it was created because basically Safety Cup best of people from the company 
they set off some like the best solution we can do uh, to help people to know what they're supposed to do, right? And this ebook came out of it, and uh, I believe that it's something that uh, could definitely help you. Uh, we also do these webinars. Uh, I guess that uh, most of you might be here because uh, you actually registered for the webinar on the landing page itself. I'm happy to say that we have more webinars coming in the future, so definitely stay tuned. And also on the landing page, there's a survey which you can fill in. And that's something that really helps us with understanding the needs of all companies, with understanding the situation, and with prioritizing what we should focus in our product next. Uh, brief comment for partners, uh, you definitely have our full marketing support, so if you want to introduce our product to your uh, customers, if you want to help with implementation and with uh, basically communicating this campaign, uh, we'll definitely help you. And uh, you're able to find the landing page on www.safetyka.com slash home office. So that's all, and hopefully this will be really beneficial for you. A uh, brief word about our company, so uh, we're, you know, coming from Czech Republic, uh, the middle of Europe, sometimes, uh, you know, we have offices in Brno and Prague, Prague uh, is sometimes called as heart of Europe, and geographically it kind of makes sense. Uh, we're working on our DLP for nine years now, so, you know, by, by this time it became really solid product that gets recognition among all the other big DLP vendors. Uh, I'm very happy to see that we have uh, 80 plus security experts on this slide because last year uh, we, our team was uh, maybe between 70 to 7 to 80 people and uh, happily we're growing uh, every year. I'm super proud that Safety Cup protects over a quarter a million of devices in over 110 countries that I take as you know a great achievement and uh, it's really great to see how these numbers grow every month and we really take a strong focus for other partnerships and we have technology alliance with companies like Fortinet, uh, with uh, ESET, uh, we're Microsoft's gold partner and we really focus on like all of these companies that uh, our customers are using their products as well uh, so that we could you know deliver something that's uh, really complementing the solutions that uh, our customers already have and to make it as easy as possible to uh, make these applications work together. To give you some, to paint a better picture of what is it that we actually do, uh, you know, we're a DLP vendor, so our main focus is to protect sensitive data our customers have. And to imagine these, it can be any personal data, any strategic plans, customer databases, intellectual property of any manufacturer or anyone, contracts with employees, contractors, uh, partners, whomever. And, you know, what we found out is that the most frequent causes of data leaks are in fact either human error, it can be problems in processes, or it could be some disgruntled employee who isn't really happy and might be trying to hurt the company intentionally for profit or just to hurt it, you know. And I'm happy to say that uh, Safety Cut DLP is able to prevent human error, it's able to fix some processes, so they're not just on paper, but they're actually practically working on the computers as well and it's thanks to its uh, analytical tools uh, safety car will also let you know about some well people who might be trying to leak some data in knowledge which we see as very important and moving on uh, you know and now we have this new situation with home office and you know this is really a huge challenge uh, there's uh, an enormous increase of employees suddenly working from the home environment. Uh, for instance, in Safetyka, it's around 90% of our staff. And if you if you want to know uh, why those 10% still goes to the office, it's usually people who have children. And I'm not sure about your countries, but here in Czech Republic, the schools are closed. And I guess it can be pretty tough to work the whole day with your 80-year-olds uh, behind your back the whole day. 
and this situation it definitely has uh, some benefits but uh, we'll be definitely focusing on the challenges it brings because um, in Safetyka uh, we had to deal with challenges such as you know mobile devices and data links uh, a lot of work about around the VPN uh, even some stuff like connection quality and also to keep in mind that right now when we have uh, you know around 70 people working from home uh, there's a huge risk of security and also not everybody is used to working from home so we were thinking how to keep the productivity level on uh, on the right level right so you know monitoring is extremely important topic because when you have uh, suddenly almost all of your company uh, working uh, remotely like a lot of things can go wrong and you know employers they want to have at least some general idea usually about what's going on because it's really tough to just estimate how many people are working from you know being in regular touch with them and uh, like for instance we had a customer who was asking us about how to he was asking us how to help him uh, like see the data from safety car because he had an employee who was saying uh, hey boss I'm working from home don't worry everything is great but in safety car uh, the, the employer he could see that this person haven't turned on his laptop for two days now you know so it's like these things that uh, thanks to proper tools can really get you the right insight to see the right cases and also to monitor all like every security incident that could be happening and speaking of security uh, that's something that you know home anonymity also plays a role because uh, when you're in the office with others and let's say you would be someone who tries to steal the data that can be quite tricky right but if you're at home you know what, what do you do you just like uh, put uh, a flash drive to the PC try to take something nobody sees you all fine and you know this is truly a new situation that uh, everyone tries to handle and because of the home office there is way higher need for sharing documents and uh, even which is combined with higher risk uh, of uh, security because uh, imagine you know uh, two months ago we've all been working normally somebody tried to share some files together they done it like they always done it with some company protected USB or something but right now your colleague may be at the other side of town or just you know a few hours of uh, travel by car and if he needs something to be shared with him and let's say it's too big to be sent via email uh, plenty of people who are not educated they might think that it's a good idea to put it for some public cloud storage for instance which is definitely definitely wrong and you know there's definitely a uh, difference between some intentional leaks and uh, some errors from our our experience we definitely see that errors are leading the the causes of leaks but you know like both ways there is there is higher risk of any undesirable uh, incident anyway um, what I'd like to share with you right now is uh, some of our findings that uh, we got from the survey on the landing page and as you can see here uh, basically nine out of ten companies they introduced home office just because of the new coronavirus and that's really a lot and also if you compare the numbers we got for how many employees were working from home office before and after coronavirus uh, you know you can see that um, it's almost as three three more times as many people now being connected remotely so like theoretically there's like three times higher risk with this and it's something that uh, really needs to be addressed so how to deal with security risk how to deal with all of that um, I already commented on the home office campaign we have uh, where you're able to find a survey and uh, document with our home office recommendations uh, what I'm very happy to share with you is uh, the fact that safety car management console uh, or application is uh, at Azure marketplace and this is truly a significant simplification of implementation I'll be uh, talking about it a bit later as well uh, what we really recommend is to use it to monitor the flow of documents and set a safe zone I'll briefly introduce this idea on uh, on the following slides and let's uh, let's just get to it 
So, some practical recommendations and research. What I'd like to, to let you know is that what I'll be covering is uh, mostly concerned about the document that we have prepared, which I really recommend you for to check out. It's um, like, let's say, the best people of Safetyka have been working on it for a few days. Uh, they put it together, but uh, we want to share as much with you right now as well. So we do have time for something. So this is what uh, I'll be talking about. Okay, so critical areas, right, or threats. And like threats, they can be divided to several sections. And we decided to cover a few of them, and especially the critical ones. So uh, what's really great is that with our tips, uh, you should be able to implement all of these advices in your environment in, let's say, a few hours, maximum days and it really helps to create secured environment together with Safetyka and I will be describing a handful of these points now. So uh, number one, so uh, what we were thinking is how to access the data and systems because uh, you know now 90% of us are at home and apparently like 90% of our customers and everyone who filled the survey for us and I'd say that, you know, seeing, uh, seeing how Czech Republic is handling it, how the world is handling it, this number is probably for the whole world. So the question of how to access data and systems, it has an easy answer. And that's actually a VPN connection, which many of you already know about. But I'm very happy to share the news that our technology partner Fortinet, they are currently giving away their own VPN for the client for free. And it's really easy to set it up, and you have you have protected connection immediately. Uh, the other point we were trying to figure out was uh, how you know how are companies able to authenticate the user? Because if you think about it, you know, like almost everyone is at home office. So how do you know that the person who's logged into Office 365, how do you know it's really him? And this has, again, an easy answer. That's uh, two-factor authentication. And, you know, it can be set up fairly quickly. Uh, it's, uh, the two-factor authentication can be done with an SMS, some uh, special application. And this is really something that's really fast to deploy. And it's really important for the security. The other thing is, uh, you know, how are you supposed to set uh, the remote computer? Because, uh, you know, as you can see on the slide here, uh, from the survey what we found is that uh, like 40% of companies are using only company-owned devices, but 10% is using only personal devices, and like half is using the combination of both. So, you know, what should you do with these? And there are actually plenty of options how to secure this, you know, like tweaking the Wi-Fi, choosing the right antivirus, and plenty of more to be found in the ebook that uh, we have on the landing page. And uh, finally, I'm getting to workstations. So our customers who are using Safety Car, they can definitely sleep way more peacefully uh, because of it. And, you know, you can either track activities or like all kinds of activities like the file flow, how people are working with the data, if they're doing any mistakes or not. It helps with security, very important. But, you know, we were wondering how should we help those without safety can now? Uh, because there are, you know, plenty of companies who are just now realizing that uh, they really do need some DLP product to help them with this situation, to help them protect their data assets. And that's what we found the answer in Microsoft's Azure, the Azure Cloud, and there, there you can find Safety Cup pre-installed, and you have the possibility to purchase the setup environment with everything, with public IP, with, with like secured communication between client and server, and install this immediately using the Azure environment. So very big thanks to Microsoft for helping us to launch this together. And, you know, if you're wondering about pushing the agents to the workstations, I'd like to let you know that that also is uh, done fairly quickly. However, if I'll continue on, you know, this, uh, it's like the whole situation is way more complex than this. 
and there are way more ways to connect all tweaks together because you have Wi-Fi and uh, firewalls, antiviruses and uh, also external devices and external devices they can bring a lot of threats because you know if you think about it you're at home someone is using his flash drive he you know put something there or someone just downloads something to his computer and what happens then so there's this big danger data and the easy access to is to how you connect privately on the phone, right? I mean, that's a great question. And I'm happy to say that there was a lot of hard work done from our development team, and uh, we actually found that what they want to stress out, what is extremely important, is employee education. And you know, what we really recommend you to as soon as possible to send a newsletter in the haven't done it yet and really inform them about what's going on, uh, what is you want from them because you know an educated user is like biggest so user and easily activity uh, and you, you can face really fatal data loss because look at a DLP like data loss protection but it can also be used as data leak prevention and that's exactly what Safety Guy is able to do as well because with our product uh, you know the users in case they're doing anything wrong there's immediately a pop-up uh, letting them know about what they should do differently or what they're doing is wrong for a certain reason. And it's really great feedback that helps the users to educate themselves in the real time without uh, the need of some ex extra trainings, even though, you know, in our eyes, the combination of both is, uh, is very important. Now, if I move on uh, with uh, more tips for immediate action, so here you can see the scheme of all the channels that uh, like you need to protect. Uh, coincidentally, these are also the channels that Safetica can, uh, can protect. And we really recommend to implement strict security perimeter. Or in Safetica, we, uh, we call this a safe zone. And yeah, I mean, it is a radical solution, but the thing is that it uh, it really works, you know, because you know the fact that you apply this strict security perimeter, it, it really helps with data protection. And basically, what it means is denying everything and only allowing users what they ask for. So let's say you might, as an administrator, you might have someone who tells you, "Hey, I need to upload this file here because I need to share it with our partner," and in case the file isn't sensitive. You allow it, but you can be sure that everything that you do out will actually be blocked. So, as you can see on the picture, uh, there are a lot of channels to secure. I'm happy to say that Safetica is uh, able to cover all of it, and you know we think that having it this way is way better than to lose the data. Now. Of course, I want to stress out that I'm talking about external communication. Uh, of course, keep allowed everything internally, you know, like emails, domain, servers, um, networks, but uh, really deny everything else outside and only allow what's really needed. And, um, you know, <laughs> this is really one of the most important recommendations and we recommend all Safety Car users to do this as soon as possible. Now, there are also, it's not just about the short-term steps, uh, there's also some long-term protection. And the first point I, I have here is uh, remote access to workstations, you know, like users working from home. And uh, a user sits at home at his own PC, he has RDP connection to, to the working computer, and the thing is that he can download the data to his own PC via the RDP connection. 
and you know it, it, like if you want to protect this I have a great news for you because uh, Safetyka can do it and uh, all you have to do is to just install Safetyka in the work environment and not allow this action and that's very important because once the user downloads the data to the home PC you lose track of it and anything can happen to it uh, there's also like long-term user education which is something I was describing because we believe that it's really great to educate the users in real time but also to just informing the users from your position as an IT admin or CIO or whatever is um, really important and training them regularly to inform them about threats and not just those connected important that they understand why the protection is needed now uh, Safetyka it has features like regular automated audit and reporting so you know what's going on and what's happening and you know implementing active data protection not only for the current situation but it's also prevention for the future because in case the situation like this happens again statistically you know it might uh, you will be prepared you will have no reason and everything will be already set up and I have just one more one more slide to show you which is safety can 9.6 and the features that will be coming with it and those of you who follow us you already know that um, we released 9.5 version uh, actually just two weeks ago which um, it's a really short time but our development team our product team they really work hard and very efficient and soon we will bring in this patch of safety 9.6 and the first feature is a reworked remote desktop with content scanning and before this in case someone was trying to download something through an RDP uh, it would be blocked only if the file was uh, already tagged uh, now there's a scanning for the content in everything so it's like an extra feature to help uh, we have a new report which is focused on work transparency it's very easy to generate and uh, you're able to see the workflow of remote users thanks to it uh, now we have some news regarding Max as well and you know uh, many of you probably know that until recently uh, there was only auditor for Max but our team is very fast releasing features that help really as soon as possible because we think it's better to provide small packages every month or so than one big uh, you know once a year or twice a year and uh, what you're able to do now on Max is to have full device control of external devices because as I was describing this is one of the big threats that uh, someone can take the data from the PC at home and in Mac you're now able to block this uh, completely and prevent any any like undesired leakage uh, the second point for Mac is the fact that you're able to turn off non-working hours in safety or or you know rather say you're able to select the working hours of your employees and this is something we wanted to also implement as soon as possible because you know we're a security company we, we like we work on security but privacy is also very important for us so now if you want to do some non-intrusive audit uh, you can just choose the period of time that your employees are you know let's say at work uh, the almost last point is the fact that we reworked safety cam mobile with separate workspace and this is exactly the answer for the question of how do you actually protect private devices because you know I I mean I have my phone I don't want to have I don't want to have a software there that can uh, check my photos right but thanks to this feature the safety cam mobile users are basically you know there's the possibility of separating the working environment uh, from the personal one on phones and uh, we see that as something really useful that could uh, really help and finally uh, safety care for safety mobile 
um, you know, we, we see this feature as uh, more entertaining than security focused, but we believe it will be a nice wholesome feature nonetheless. And it's basically a little game for safety car mobile users asking about how they, how they feel, if the work is fine, etc. And uh, hopefully this uh, will provide you with more feedback about your employees, about your colleagues and about how to you know, improve anything for them. Uh, the last important thing from my side, SafetyCon 9.6 will be uh, for uh, will be available for early access by end of April, and we will absolutely let you know once it's ready. So stay tuned. And with that, um, I'm passing my word to Stepan, who will be covering the demo of SafetyCon and share with you some information on Office 365 integration, and uh, then we'll just cover the Q&A. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Stepan, and during the during the last part of our uh, presentation of our webinar, I'd like to share with you some practical uh, tips and tricks uh, which could be useful for you uh, during these times when many employees were forced when many I mean employers were forced to move their employees to home office so without further ado let's move to our safety car console and uh, uh, perhaps firstly when when you you switch from normal work to to home office uh, you want to check that uh, all the clients, safety car clients on, on the endpoints are communicating correctly with the, with the server. Uh, so therefore, perhaps the first thing uh, you want to check in endpoint overview is the time when the last logs were sent and you want these times to be recent and that means that the, the endpoint is communicating correctly. Also, you, you might want to check the unsent records. Um, well, as you probably know, uh, Safetica client uh, works even when it's not connected to the server. So it works even offline and it stores the logs locally. And when it uh, again has connection to server, then it uploads all the logs to the server. Uh, so the unsent records means that uh, there are some records which are being tra transferred, but um, also that could mean some potential problem in uh, in communication, in connection. So that's something you definitely want to check as well. Uh, we have a column here, a service running. That means that the service, uh, the safety car client is turned on and it's working correctly. That's something you want to check as well. Uh, we definitely recommend using uh, VPN in order to allow the clients, safety car clients, be connected to the server. Uh, but uh, sometimes um, that might be not a suitable solution for you. So it's uh, easily you can easily redirect uh, all the clients to the public IP address of your safety car server and therefore um, they can communicate uh, directly between each other. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. You simply right click uh, on the server or you can select perhaps some, some group, but I'm gonna do it for the, for the whole user tree. Right click, redirect. And here you can add addresses for the clients and you can add more than one and the um, Safetica client uh, tries them in the order which you which you select and uh, it uses the first one which is successful. So let's say that I'm gonna add the first address and then there could be let's say another one. When you hit OK uh, these new settings will be applied, but uh, please note that the client needs to have uh, uh, access 
to the to the server at this time when you're creating the changes because otherwise the changes won't apply all right so now we've checked that uh, all our Civica clients are communicating correctly uh, as Peter has mentioned uh, the new situation uh, brings a lot of challenges and uh, perhaps you might want to have a better insight into what are your employees doing during their time at home office so when we go to the to the auditor and applications let's say that you'd like to find out more about which applications are they using you can you can easily uh, you can easily see that if you take the application column and bring it up here and now you can see which applications were used the most during the uh, selected time period perhaps uh, you're not interested in all the applications and uh, you you'd like to know more about some specific uh, category of applications so that could be easily filtered like this let's say that you'd like to know uh, more about cat softwares and um, let's say CRM well and as, as you can see all the records are filtered we have only some SOLIDWORKS which is a CAD application so you can see that clearly here uh, but uh, perhaps you want to create your own category and uh, insert some uh, applications which you are particularly interested in into this category so let's go to maintenance uh, categories and we can browse our categories here and we can as well create a new one so I'm going to create a work category now I go back to applications I will clear all the previously applied filters and let's say that I want uh, Microsoft Excel to go into that uh, into that category instead of Office Suite so I'm going to move it there and and also let's say let's say Google Chrome for example so these two would be our two working applications and we'd like to know more more about them now we can create a, a new layout based on this one and this helps you to uh, to create a report which could be regularly sent to you by email or it could be saved to a path on the server so i'm going to uh, save this current view as the work apps sorry i have to i have to apply the filter first so right now I, I will be able to see both these applications and the and the records for them and and let's say that I'd like to see which user on on which PC worked in these applications so right now you can see all the records for that and you have a better insight about what is going on uh, in their work time now I'm going to save this view let's call it work apps and since we created our custom layout we can 
create a new report based on this. So I'm going to name it work apps as well. And as you can see, we have a number of predefined, uh, predefined reports which, which you can use. But uh, when we scroll down here in the auditor and applications, there's the new layout we've just created. I'm going to select it. In the next step, I'm going to add users for whom the report will apply. Let's say that I want, well, I want it for the whole company. Also, I can select a time interval. Uh, so let's say that I'm going to go for, for 7, 7 a.m. to, uh, let's say, 5 p.m. So all the records in the in the report will be only from this time interval. In the in the last last step, we can uh, we can add an email. So the records will be sent to this email. You can choose if you, if you'd like to have just the charts in PDF or records in Excel or both. You can choose if you'd like to have detailed looks in, in, the, in the Excel file uh, or you can select the path where to save, save the report. So for the purpose of this webinar, I'm going to go to save it to desktop. And the last part is the time period. And you can select either day, week or month. So let's say that I'd like to have a daily report about my employees' activities. So I select a day, and that means that every day, roughly after midnight, uh, I will receive this email with report uh, containing the PDF and XLS containing records about, uh, about the applications from the selected category as we've created in the previous step. As always in Safety Call, let's, let's save it at the end. And that should be covered. So now uh, you might be better informed about the, the time, uh, how, how the users, how your uh, employees spend their time at home office. And uh, let's say that you want to also create some alert. So I'm going to create a new alert and I'm going to show you which parts could be useful for you, particularly during these times. Uh, you can very easily select, uh, choose to be uh, informed when a user spends selected time on a, in a web category, which you select. So let's say that I'd like to know if, uh, if my employees uh, spend too much time playing games. So I select this web category and I can say that if they, if they spend more than 30 minutes a day in this web category, I'm going to receive uh, alert. You can do something very similar for applications as well. Uh, just on a side note, these uh, alerts are, gen are triggered uh, after midnight, similarly uh, like the reports, because we don't consider these alerts to be uh, so dangerous, let's say, uh, while on the contrary, the security alerts, which are related to violating of DLP rules, those are triggered immediately after, after the incident happens. So that should be all. Again, we at users. Again, I'd like to know uh, everything about the whole company. Again, you can you can 
uh, insert the email address for these uh, for these alerts. If you leave it blank, uh, no email won't be sent, and you'll be able to to view the records in in console only. So I'm going to go for this option, and let's finish that and and save it. So this could be some useful useful tips uh, which could be uh, beneficial for you during these times and uh, and the last thing I'd like to mention from our online demo are perhaps some optimizations uh, of your of your endpoints uh, because uh, during these times uh, you might want to want to decrease uh, the network traffic uh, because users are connected via VPNs and uh, it might be sort of different situation for you so you can either increase or let's say decrease uh, the interval how often does the client send uh, logs to server so that's one thing which could be quite beneficial for you in here and uh, you can also uh, select, you can also specify how is Setica going to behave outside of the working hours. Uh, so firstly we can say that uh, after the working hours everything will work uh, the same so it means that uh, there will be still some productivity based monitoring and, and blocking for example in the uh, module supervisor you can block access to some websites so everything will be working even after after the working hours you can say that uh, the the activity will be still monitored but uh, but the user will be allowed to access the website I mean after the after the working hours website which which is originally blocked so for this we have option do not block by productivity and the last option is that there's no monitoring no blocking if that goes together with your company's policy and you'd like to allow your users to use your uh, company's laptops uh, for their personal purposes it might be perfectly fine you can select this option uh, just on a side note the DLP rules are working 24-7 uh, because um, it would make sense to uh, to disable these rules for a certain amount of time so all these rules are uh, applied re regardless on, on these settings so that would be everything from uh, from the from the safety car console and uh, now I'm going to, to share with you uh, a video about uh, new function which we have introduced in safety car version 9.5 and uh, we've reworked uh, our integration into into 0365 it used to be in in web safety car but now we, we have moved the settings to to our desktop console so firstly we're going to to enable uh, logging of emails uh, you need to provide your credentials for administration account with 0365 and as long as you as you sign sign in uh, this option will be will be enabled hmm. this basically means that safety is integrated into exchange and now we can see not just emails sent from outlook as uh, as you can see now but uh, we are also able to see uh, emails sent from uh, from Outlook on the web which which uh, wasn't possible before so as long as the account is linked to exchange to 065 then you'll be able to see uh, 
see these records about these emails in, in our safety console. Uh, there's going to appear a new group uh, called cloud users, as you can see on the left side. And uh, both the accounts are synchronized. And as you can see, both the emails are locked. And now we're going to enable uh, enforcing of DLP policies through through O365 Exchange. Uh, so we've enabled this option, and now the the video uh, shows you basically the whole process of uh, creating uh, a data category for sensitive data. Uh, I'm just going to mention one, one pretty important thing. Um, DLP rules on exchange could be applied only on files which are, uh, which are classified with uh, metadata. Uh, so it's not applied on files classified with uh, NTFS tag. But nevertheless, it gives you uh, Quite a quite a good chance to extend uh, the possibilities of files which which could be blocked. So now I'm, I'm creating a new blocking policy for emails only, and uh, uh, the company's domain is in safe zone, and uh, therefore it will be allowed. And now we're going to. Uh, show you how how that how how that works. So, firstly, uh, admin uh, sends a sensitive file uh, to user. Uh, user belongs to company's domain, so um, so it's allowed action, and it will be allowed. The next thing is that the admin tries to send the very same file to an email address which doesn't belong to uh, to the company's domain. And as you'll be able uh, able to see, um, the action will be blocked. And uh, you will immediately receive uh, an email from from Exchange uh, saying that, uh, that the action was blocked. Previously, we weren't able to control files being sent from web browsers. Now we're allowed to do that. And uh, the last things, let's say that user tries to forward the sensitive file again outside of the company's domain and he's locked from a computer which doesn't have safety car client installed he's working from home let's say from home office and even though the rules are applied because it goes through exchange and you can also easily enable auditing and logging of file operations in o365 from safety car console so again, I'd like to thank all of you for attending this session and uh, you can definitely look forward to some new webinars that we'll be launching in the future. So with that, everyone, have a really beautiful, beautiful weekend, uh, nice Easter holidays to everyone who's uh, going to celebrate it and hopefully we'll be able to uh, see each other on some next session in the future. So. Thanks again and take care.